Welcome to our midweek photo talk. We are on air now. Hi, my name is Andre Appel. I'm a photographer from central Germany and we're here with our midweek photo talk again and we start with the introduction round. Andy. Hello everybody. I'm Andy Gray. I'm from the northeast of England. I'm a part-time photographer and uh, I have a new webcam today so hopefully you can see me clearly. Indeed, um, it's perfect. Much it. and I'll pass you on to Don. Hi, my name is Don Knoll. I'm a I'm a guy who's a stay-at-home dad and amateur photographer who hangs out in the middle of the day while my daughter's napping with these fine European folks. I'm the token American. Anyway, um, uh, take it, Helen. Um, I'm Helen Stiriadis. I'm an architect and photographer. I hang out with these folks very often during the day. I'll shoot anything and everything, so watch out. Mark. Hello, I'm Mark Helm. I'm from uh, London, Ontario, Canada. I'm a Canadian. I spend most of my day keeping uh, Don company. I shoot macro a lot. Um, I shoot some H HRD, but mostly macro, and uh, I'm retired, so I have lots of time on my hands. I think Oli can't talk, but Oli is doing our recording today. He's from Sweden, and he's our technician. <laughs> and then there's Roger. Yes, good evening, everybody. My name is Roger. I'm from the Netherlands, and... Uh, I'm doing a lot of photography there and hanging out from there a lot of it with you guys and other, other guys. And I like it a lot and uh, well, that's about it. Thank you very much. All right, we can then start with our <laughs> midweek. Wow, we, all of us, uh, look into the photo streams of G+, and we choose a picture that we really, really like or love. Who wants to start and show his favorite picture of the week? I like to do it. Um, scrolling through because, oh yeah, there it is. Uh, shall I share my screen for you? Go ahead. I share my screen and then I... Uh, okay. Are you able to see it? Yep. Okay, cool. This is a post from Shirley Lowe. Um, it's, uh, I think it's a great picture and also the story behind it. Uh, the, the post is really uh, alive. A lot of people commenting on it, uh, talking about photography and uh, um, I'm getting inspired by this picture a lot. Um, well, for me, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's checking, it's it's uh, figuring out how the uh, relationship between uh, nature and humans, and how the what's it called in English, uh, how small we are and how big nature is. That's in the picture for me, um, and yeah, a lot of. Uh, uh, types of fish and the fish are all together by a uh, uh, sort of species and that was uh, I was figuring uh, thinking about uh, um, why they don't mix up all together uh, but just staying uh, with their own species together and uh, yeah, I, I, I related to photography and to humans uh, because we all as humans, we all also like to uh, yeah, stay in our own group. <clears throat> and I think as artists, uh, you have to uh, get out of that group and uh, share a new perspectives on things. And Well, that's how I'm uh, philosophizing about uh, this picture. And uh, besides that, the, the picture on itself is great, I think. I don't know where it is. I haven't figured it out yet. I've been in Japan in 1995. There was a big aquarium, uh, and it looks like it, but I don't think it's uh, it's in in Japan. That aquarium where I went it was in Kobe, 
but it's it's about the same size. It's beautiful, I think. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what I think about it. So, what do you think of it? I like the silhouette. I like the silhouette of the people. Very simple, holding hands in front of the big blue sea. Yeah, exactly. Um, I like the framing. The fish, the fish are good. The lighting is is you can see a lot of the fish. Yeah. Your aquarium photography, I find very hard because you know you got all kinds of reflective surfaces. Yeah. You know, yeah. getting back at you. But. Yeah, and they're really standing there, humble and uh, looking up, and wow, it's big, and that's what I think I see. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's a nice picture. It really is. Yeah. So that's my uh, contribution for the week. Wow, this week. Great choice you made. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Holy cow, you set a high, high bar here to, to follow. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> he always does it. <laughs> uh, I see, okay. He must do homework, does he? Yeah. He <laughs> We always uh, pick last minute, but he really invents uh, invest, invents time. Link to this post. I shall put a link in the chat log as well. Yeah, I think Don wants to show us his. Yeah. Who's screen sharing? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is from Enrique oh. Paleas and. Uh, I just I like the composition of the leaves. I like the fact that he got all the wing in in uh, in focus. I love the coloring on the the butterfly wing. I mean, I, I see a lot of butterfly pictures, but you don't see many this good. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It it has a has a high clarity. I'd say <clears throat> um, if I'm not looking, I click the link so that I can see mm -hmm. it clearly. And right. uh, the background's greatly thrown out of focus, and uh, everything concentrates on the butterfly. You've got the yeah, lights that's... of the leaves uh, leaving towards him, and a great contrast in color. The green leaves and the the this colorful uh, butterfly with his eyes on the on the wings. And yeah. and tech sharp. The important parts yeah. are tech sharp. Yeah. Oh, smooth as butter, <laughs> the rest. Wonderful. Yeah, that's cool. It's uh, restricted use, I see. Are we uh, allowed to show it? <laughs> well, we're, we're, not we're, copying. we're, we're not copying, yeah, we're not copying it. it. We're we're looking at it from okay. the original source. We're giving him an exposure. We should be happy. Yeah, I'm actually putting the... Uh, I'm actually putting the... In, in the comments, this photo of the week discussed on... We can we can top. put a black bar on 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 the eyes of the butterfly if you don't want to. Be. <laughs> <laughs> did did sure. the butterfly? You're asking, you're asking if the butterfly actually <laughs> actually signed a a modeling <laughs> agreement release. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Mark, you are into uh, macro photography, right? I I can't see the the picture very well. My 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 whole thing is acting up here right now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I just have a, I just have the thumbnail. I can't see the details on it. I can't see a bigger picture. Okay, but what I wanted to ask you, yeah, maybe you can see that as well. Sometimes they freeze. Uh, uh, oh, it's the 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 birds or the butterflies. Oh, was or, it live or, or was it not? Yes. I, okay. I have no idea. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. I mean, they they you can't tell the difference anymore. Some of the ones you see, it's amazing that they actually get the insect to do what they're photographing them doing, but I guess it's supposed to be uh, live. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. From, I can't see it to start with, but I can't tell. But I think it's virtually impossible anymore to know whether they're live or whether they're posed. Well, if they're posed, there's sometimes you can tell, you know, when, like, the leg's broken off or the antenna's missing, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but the good ones, you won't see that. Right, you know, right, right. It's it's amazing when you see them pinned for uh, how they have to take all that time to pin them to move all because you have to relax them again, and then move okay. all those legs around and pin them all to get them to reset again. It's mm. it's quite a lot of work. I have to go again. My plug-in has crashed again. Welcome, okay. Kevin. Just return. 
Mark? Yes, enter. Okay. Can. We will reinvite you in a moment. Hi, Kev. Yes, thanks. We are online. We are recording. If you agree. <laughs> Because we already introduced, introduced ourselves. So time to introduce yourself, Kev. Right. Oh, that's nice. Um, I've seen I missed all the introductions. Uh, um, yeah, I'm Kevin Elizabeth. I live in Ireland, originally from New Zealand, and uh, I dabble in general photography. And you can find me on Google Plus. Cool. I think that's a link to my uh, midweek wow. Right. Perhaps I can share the screen. Do you see it? Yes? Yes. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, why did I choose this picture? I love landscape shots, especially if they are well executed. And this one must be, I guess, a multi-exposure shot. So some kind of HDR, but I don't think you see it that much. Got a painterly effect overall, no. the image. I love this river in the foreground. The picture was great foreground interest with this frozen river. Uh, leading towards uh, the background, then the, this giant forest, and then this uh, great mountainscape in the in the background, with the sun just rising. Uh, especially love the colors, which are not so so. Yeah, they don't have such an impact. They are more subtle or more uh, pastel-like. That's what I liked about this shot. Mm -hmm. That's something I would hang on my wall, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything just leads into the picture up in the mountain. Nice hairs, nice bit of hairs. Not overly, uh, you know, it's, it's not overly sharp or anything like that. Not too contrasting. Yeah. Don't like it. You know where <clears throat> you know where it is, uh, Andre? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, the frozen Oregon's Mount Hood. Yeah, Mount Mount Hood's a pretty uh, popular place. Ah, okay. Mm, okay. I don't know that place, but that doesn't say anything. <laughs> okay. Yes. Ah, Helen has one up her sleeve. Yeah. We can. Okay. Should I share yeah. the screen then? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Ah. Uh, Put the link in too, if you can, because that way we can see it clearer. Of course, the link is right here. We've got time. This well. is a this is a macro shot by a friend of mine. His name is Ioannis Stambulis. He's uh, he's Greek, and uh, he found a very old lens, a Jupiter 8 50 millimeter lens at f, oh. f 2.0. And uh, he converted the thread for his Nikon D700. And he was testing it out. And uh, I like how he shot this, because it's an everyday subject. But the composition is so cool. It's like all jumble. The, the matches are a jumble. And they're all over to one side. And the negative space on the other side. And the pretty color. And uh, I like how you, you get a sense of depth with all the matches. You get ones in the front, one in the back. And, um, I don't know. I really like this image. It, it surprised me, and I think he did really well with uh, this lens he found. And he's 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 going, you know, through a bunch of little objects, uh, photographing them, and I think he's doing a great job. And I I really love images that that take everyday objects and just see them in a fresh light. And uh, I'm always envious of people who can do that. I try to do that too. So I was very happy with this one. I like it. And I, I think it reminds me of French fries, except for the, you didn't have the match head. Doesn't it? Doesn't I, it? I, I, was, I looked at the top, I looked at the yes. top, started looking yes. down, and I thought it made me hungry. <laughs> and I, and I saw the little. match head, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, sulfur, bad, don't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it took me a moment to recognize what it is. Like then, blue tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I like a great use of depth of field on, on an everyday object, yeah. Small things are always. 
interesting uh, to look so, at them at a different angle. Oh, so this is in his small things. Yeah, uh, he's got a small things. Yeah, yeah. I, you, you didn't give me. You gave me the link to his profile, and so I've been, I've oh. been being, I've oh. been trying to be careful about putting the we've discussed this in each comment. Oh, I'm this sorry. Here it is. It's you. right here. I found it. I've got it. I've got oh, it now. Okay. Okay. So I'm there. Sorry. Yeah. Is Mark back, by the way, or? I'm back. I'm here. Can ah, you okay. No. No. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see your wall or whatever. <laughs> You're talking. Oh goodness! This is terrible today. It's been. <laughs> I have not had any technical problems forever. Oh, you are. But uh, Helen. Better. About that lens, uh, is that an, uh, an old lens, or I've, I've searched? Yeah, it. it's an old lens. I think I think um, someone in his family had it, or something. Ah, I see. Yes. Yeah, I just the thing is, is, unless it's had the AIS um, mount update, you have to be careful with those kind of things because they actually hurt. Even though it's the same Nikon F mount, there are now contacts that weren't there before in those older. Lens days. You have to be careful that you. He said it, it, the post it's reads a, a M39 like a thread converted for Nikon. Oh, okay, so I he had it converted. Okay, that, but, yeah. all right. So he had it converted to Nikon. Yeah. Uh, you can, you, he had you it can reversed, get, though, didn't he? Helen, didn't he shoot it reversed? Excuse me. Did he shoot it reversed? Did I don't reverse think so. No, no. no, I think that's a, I that, think so. that might be that might have a uh, extend. I think that's an extension to. I, I would believe. There's the there's the link to the lens. It seems to be a Russian. Yeah. Russian lens that copies Russian the Leica? size size sonar 85 f2 lens. Ah uh, yes, it's the yeah. pre-war lens. Yeah, mm -hmm. so full manual. <laughs> cool, <laughs> but, but that's awesome. Yeah. They made made some pretty nice lenses in those days. Mm. Nice. I'm not sure. I have one here that I saw. I'm not sure this is the exact link to it, but we'll try it. No, I did it. No, wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. Here it I'll says. Put, it I'll put mine up while while you while you. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that doesn't even work. Thing here. Uh, that one. Try and screen share. Is it Sharon getting there? Yeah, I had to. F I have to go find it, but it's okay. You, you got his profile, but I can find it from the profile. I have right. the actual photo. I will it's comment on it. Okay, there's Andy's picture. Tell us something like about it. Um, well, I mean, having, having, a, having a bit of a background in uh, architecture and building, then you know these kind of shots jump out at us, and this one especially, just the way it's. He's managed to frame it, you know, brilliantly with a bit of negative space, but he's also got the contrails of the aircraft. But if you look in the reflections, that corner of the opposite, the building on the opposite side of the street, lines up perfectly with the corner of the bottom building, building at the bottom. Yeah. Now that takes some doing. That's cool. If you're wandering around in a busy, busy city with traffic flying around and whatever then to be able to get yourself into the position where you can position that perfectly like that, that's that's a successful shot in my book. And I, I wonder if he had an if he has friends who are airline pilots who did the little <laughs> <laughs> work up top for him because that's that it, that adds to the picture. It actually it actually balances out the open space very well. But yeah, yeah, that's <coughs> quite uh, strikes you as such a such a good shot. Yeah. Uh, I love the colours too. The the, the light great, and, yeah. and the, the the colours are beautiful. They yeah, uh, the shades of blue plus the browns and yellows there, and the reflection, lovely. Yeah, I mean going through his uh, going through his um his portfolio and got uh, you know as well as the black and white architectural stuff that he's got. You know the, the colour stuff's just just mm -hmm. as even even more so stunning. Uh, I just love the the processing style he uses as well. Yep. I like the good juxtaposition of all the new. I like the composition and I like the sky. And the blues very catching against the yellow and orange. Very nice. Great stuff. And that's close Peter Cubic. 
very famous on Google Plus, yes. But. Yeah, and these, these modern buildings and in the reflection, these are more old buildings, yeah, especially at the mm -hmm. bottom. It's a nice contrast in, in, in telling a story in this picture. Yes, that's great. I'm, I'm assuming in the, the, the top face of the building there, the large one, that, that that's a, it is a reflection of another building across. <laughs> yes. It's great how it's sort of grown, like, you know, the whole reflection thing is grown in layers. Yeah. It's just a Patrick shot, really. Yeah. Oh, it's. I'll, I'll, I'll try to show. To me, it would be a once in a lifetime shot. <laughs> no. Are you ready for marks? Mark, right, we'll see what happens here. Right, well. Screen is free for you. Is that the the the? the uh, have you you got a link for it first? Oh, we got. Ooh, nice. Oh, this is, a, this is a picture by uh, Gail Bierman. Gail is a, a Canadian photographer who is just a, my my hero. She is uh, she does everything from uh, this kind of bird photography through uh, um, photo painting, macro. Um, I mean, I think she captures the essence of this owl. And it's uh, just the the flight feathers, the uh, the intensity of the eyes, the protrusion of the claws, I mean, it's just just to that instant of, po of pounce, you know, it's, it's such a powerful image. And then if you look at her uh, her galleries, there are pictures over and over and over again of the same quality, just out of standing. Awesome. Now I'm looking, I think I've lost it also, I've seen it before. Uh, I love this white oval against the warm background, and and look at those <laughs> giant claws. Yeah, that's that's awesome compared to her head size. I mean, that's <laughs> whoa! I don't want to be a rabbit or something. <laughs> I, have to, I have to admit, I'm a little envious of people who can catch birds and fly like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. me it's too. Patience, patience it takes. <laughs> amongst other things. That's why we're not. That's why I'm not very successful in. Dogs. And and me too. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be quiet Success for a long time. Is so no, no, no way for me. I can't Not stand enough. still so long. <laughs> and one of the things that's, that's this year with snowy owls is that they're they're farther south than they have been for a long time. Uh, they're showing up all over the place, way south of where they normally would be uh, doing at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Mostly because I think they, they the the lemons that they lemons and lemons that they feed on are in a seven-year low, so they're, they're down here uh, scavenging. Of course, since we don't have any snow, it uh, gives them a lot of opportunity. Hmm. So that's my that's my picture of the week. That's very, very cool. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I like the snowy owl because the, the small pin feathers make them look furry. They look more, they look more mammalian than some owls. <laughs> <laughs> Gab's got one ready to fill it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I wasn't really prepared. Um, I'll proceed with the screen here. Damn, we are always and, so uh, well the reason, prepared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just and, and the reason I'm going to share this one is it came through my stream today, and and I've seen um, Hen Henry's work before, or Henry is it? And uh, but this one here has really struck me today, and and. Uh, well, I had a bit of a sneaky discussion already with the guys, but I like this. I like the colours, the tones, but most of all, I love the way he's captured the personality of the of the young girl there, and uh, it really shines through for me. And he's processed it just right for me. That's cool. It tells a story. She's got a newspaper yeah. or something in her hand. I don't know. Perhaps just got it. <laughs> and she's pointing, hey, you are taking a picture of me. That's it, yeah. That's <laughs> right. Right. That's, that's, that's cool. She has an excellent an excellent expression on her face. Right. Her, very, yeah. her, her very dirty little face. It's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the only thing I, I could suggest is, you know, she's right in the center of the picture. Works for me. Um, you see yeah, where she can from. I mean, you see where she's going. 
Yeah, she's she's just walking home, and and the the photographer's seen her and pointed the the camera, and she's seen them as well. And hey, you're taking a picture, as, as someone said there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it it just it shows off. Maybe, maybe could have been a little bit more composition, but um, what are you going to do? Left to right, probably probably to the right of the picture with her. But um, I, I think it works actually. I think it works. It gives you an idea of the environment there and where she is in it, and and perhaps what she's even right. doing. So yeah. And, and we never know what was left or or right of her if there were other distracting stuff you didn't want in the frame. Too true. Yeah, you could have been what someone is. in front of you. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is we've gotten through the first half of our show and we've used up half the time. No problem. <laughs> and I think we should. And I think we should take a little teeny break where we stop the recording. Honestly, shooting those owls is very easy right now because they're all hanging out um, on a beach near Vancouver, BC, and uh, they're really easy to photograph. Not so easy in flight, but very easy just sitting on the logs. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. um, Roger is doing the recording. If you agree, Gail, we would continue, and you could tell us something about how do you focus on a bird on flight? How do you prepare for the shot? Do you sit there all day and wait? Uh, uh, perhaps you can give us some insights. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't not to put you not to put you on the spot or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, I will often sit all day and wait. Um, I have sat for eight hours on a cliff, uh, looking into an eagle's nest, waiting for eagles to fly in. Um, and sometimes they'll leave those poor babies starving for hours. It's it's quite interesting. But uh, actually photographing the owls, the snowy owls right now is very easy um, where I am. The uh, owls usually winter in the Arctic and for, the, for some reason this year they've chosen to winter further south and uh, snowy owls hunt a lot by day so they'll sit on logs um, like right on the beach and where these owls are there's a path uh, pretty close to them probably 25 feet away and uh, the owls usually just sit there now the tricky part is catching them in flight hmm. so you know you have to be ready you've got to have your your camera um, although 99% of the time they'll just be sitting there in one spot you've got to be ready and have it on I shoot with a Canon so I usually leave it on AI focus and I'm I'm usually you know uh, with a, a low f-stop and um, quite a high speed so that I can I can capture them as well as I can so but they're actually so we, quite easy right now. <laughs> so we let, let the camera decide which AF point to choose also for full auto and AI, so it tracks well, the subject? Actually, I usually shoot um, I usually shoot aperture priority, so I usually am just choosing my f-stop and letting the camera sh yep. uh, choose uh, the speed, but um, often for birds in flight, I kind of override that a little bit, so I'll either shoot uh, manual or I'll, uh, not often do I shoot shutter priority, I just prefer to do aperture priority, but um, you know, with, with the snowy owls, I had to um, underexpose quite a bit, surprisingly. Um, and, uh, to get the detail in the owl. Yeah, to get the detail in the owl, and um, a couple of times, uh, well, I like to shoot at sunrise, so, you know, the owls are facing the sun. That owl was not um, facing the sun, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, to get the detail in the owl, I'm underexposing sometimes by mm, one and a third stops. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, what I was interested in was the uh, AF. Uh, do, do you choose uh, the center AF point uh, manually, or do you leave let the camera decide which <laughs> AF points are on, then just uh, pan, pan with it? I mean, it looks it, like a pan shot. Uh, uh, it's somewhat panned. Um, it's so tricky. I when you're shooting birds in flight, the easiest thing to do is shoot with a uh, with a center AF point yeah. because. You know, it's so tricky. And then I think that image is a little bit cropped so that, um, you know, I may have shot it uh, in the center or somewhat in the center, but then I've, I've uh, 
cropped it a little bit to make it more interesting. Mm. I um, I thought I don't know much about birds, but I thought uh, owls were nocturnal animals. They are. Most owl species are nocturnal, but uh, the snowy owl um, is diurnal, so it it will hunt by day. They do hunt at night a little bit, but they but they mostly hunt by day, and that may have something to do with being in the Arctic, um, you know, there isn't much daylight anyway during the winter, so... Yeah, the other I'm thing is, is that sure. in, the, yeah, in the Arctic, there are, there are no other top flying predators. I mean, the snowy owl is it. There are not a lot of hawks and e eagles that are, they, that, that are that, that they're that far north that time of yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, and so, so maybe... So they, they have less to worry about. Yeah, they don't... Well, I'm not sure if eagles or hawks would actually ever attack an owl that big. Oh um, yes. You think they would? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So there we go. They don't have to worry about it. But there's <laughs> eagles around, though. There's eagles in the Arctic. Really? Really? Oh, I, 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 I've oh, seen very few eagles. Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm just thinking that there, there, there's certain, there's certain falcons in, on the yeah. others in Europe, but in the, in the Americas, I don't think they're. I think the snowy owl is the top flying predator in the north. I think okay, so. That's there why. Go. That's why they're there. Yeah. There we go. Nothing big enough to eat them. Well, <laughs> and that's why they don't have to hunt it during the during night. You know. Yeah. Well, interesting. Um, where these owls are wintering right now, there were at least at least a dozen eagles, really, really close. Oh, really? To them. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, and uh, they didn't seem to be in competition at all. But uh, the snowies just tend to hunker down low, and the eagles are up high, so maybe they figure it out that way. Hmm. Okay, and uh, how long is the lens you shoot with normally? Uh, for that one, I have a 300 f2.8 oh, nice. IS, so I was using that, and I think for that image I was using a 1.4 teleconverter on it. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Very yeah. good. Now, ideally, uh, I would rather have a 500 to shoot with <laughs> for that, um, but hey. The 300 is, is good. It's actually a really sharp lens for birds in flight. Um, if you don't use a two times teleconverter on it, okay. with the one point four is the biggest. So you, you go. Um, well, you can use a two times, um, and I still get autofocus with the two times, but it tends to be slow focusing, mm. um, and so you know it doesn't track very well with uh, the two times teleconverter on it. Okay. Yeah, you lose too much light. Yeah, yeah. I, I went. To, I went to a bird shoot with a three hundred, where I thought they would we'd be close up, and they, we were far away, and I was it was very sad because I, I, yeah. I, I traveled three hours to go take some pictures of some wintering sandhill cranes, and I brought a knife to a gunfight. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's too bad. Yeah. Well, you know, we all have uh, lensitis, I think, where we all want something more lens than we envy. have. Lens envy. Yes. Yeah, lens envy. Yeah. You know, it's like it. it's like six hundred six hundred millimeter bird lens or food. Hmm. I'm picking yeah, food. Well, or a car. <laughs> Or a car. Or a car. <laughs> hey, Gail. Yeah. That orangutan picture is the most haunting picture I have ever seen. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty amazing, eh? It is. It's well, beautiful. when I create those images, to me, it's almost magical. Just sometimes did. the way they the way they come out, it's yes. kind of magical. Let me let me see if I can share this. Put this up because this this is incredible. Well, there's a link in the chat window. Oh wow! Oh man! Is that, is that not is that not incredible? Yes. And Gail. Oh, I remember this one. Gail, did you do? Oh, did yeah. you use the oh, Pixel cool. Bender with this? Yes, I did. Ah, I, just, I love I it. Use, I use Pixel Bender, but I also um, use a lot of dodging and burning and blur and smudge tools in right. Photoshop. Right. <laughs> because otherwise, Pixel Bender does really weird stuff to some. Area. Yeah, you have to yeah. fix it if you want it to look real. I yeah, agree. yeah. You just had you just go down and look through these pictures. They're just incredible. This is an extremely memorable image. I Whoa, think. awesome! Yeah. Uh, you, you've got some magic pictures here. Is this oh, is you. this all uh, uh, real wildlife? I mean, the orangutan. I guess it's in the zoo, or <laughs> some of them are in the zoo. Some of them are wildlife. Cool. Now, see, I like Gail's where she's sitting right now because, like me, she has her bird feeders in sight all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you are right. I love Gail, my bird. Gail, Gail, look at this. That's I do this, cool. and they, they get mad when I do this. 
<laughs> no, no, I still I can I'm looking at the neighbors. Thing. Yeah, I could shoot right outside my, right from my kitchen window almost, and uh, I don't very often, but it's fun. Mm. I do the same thing. I, I, there was a cardinal. I, I left the the room a, about an hour ago to go catch a cardinal. And he, every time I open the dark back window, the dark back door, know how quietly he moves. He leaves. Yeah. <laughs> I got a picture. I, of, I got a picture of him between two fence slats. I got his head. That's the only uh, picture I got him. I've been oh, trying to wait. That's me. I wish I could attract yeah. hummingbirds a little bit better. I have a friend who. Uh, oh, who don't te offers... don't tease the poor Europeans. They don't have them. <laughs> Oh really? I did yeah, not know that. I, I just I just found this out two weeks ago as well. I was talking to people like, oh, you don't have hummingbirds? Oh, that's sad. You know. They what, what, what they're, 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 North, they're a North American thing. No, they're also in Italy, aren't they? I think no, those are swallows. So. I, didn't know. I didn't know. Those are swallows. They're not hummingbirds. Wow. Hmm. Well, there we go. I was Something I was unique. I didn't know I didn't know that until uh, this week. I mean, or last week that. I, so now we can we can. I don't think we have too many gorillas here either. No, 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 no. But there are zoos with orangutans. I don't think. I guess you could probably see. I bet you could probably see a hummingbird in a zoo if you go to the right zoo. Hey, that gorilla is lives in Berlin. Really? Oh, yeah. He's he's a wild Berlin gorilla. Oh, so so that's Andy. You should go see the go see the gorilla and say hi to him. No, that's the other that's the other thing that I find interesting about paintography stuff is that I wouldn't normally paint, uh, post an image of an animal in a zoo, but when I'm able to paint it using paintography and um, actually make it more a work of art, then I don't mind posting a zoo animal. It, it's kind of an interesting thing. All right, okay. Okay, let's, let's stop here, because this is an interesting subject you just brought up. Yeah, so, yeah, I know. So you think the paint dog, being a painting is more art than photography as a photographer? Interesting. Well, no, but I am an okay. artist um, in other uh, Medium, so, okay. mediums as well. So okay. I do think it's a different form of art. It's no less artistic. But uh, to me, um, what I'm doing now is kind of a blend between painting with uh, pigment on a brush and painting uh, or and photography and so I'm quite enjoying that okay all right it's setting a very high standard too I might add yes <laughs> thank you very much well I'm learning along with everyone so yeah all right Andre you're leaving us no I'm not leaving oh um, Andy's got to go Andy's got to go, go. Uh, Andy. where are your glasses done I, they're right here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. <laughs> I left them upstairs again. He's Darn blind. <laughs> blind so, photography. <laughs> how did you form this group? Um, oh, good Andy, question. Andy and Andy and uh, and Roger really did it. I came in on like the first one and uh, nice. I stuck around. Nice. Yeah, we we were hanging out a lot. We were discussing interesting stuff and decided that it might be interesting for others too. So we decided to uh, have it on a weekly, or now it's every two weeks base, basis every uh, Wednesday. So we called it Midweek Photo Talk, and here we are. And this is my first. And this is my first one today. Oh, nice. And more. Now, now you got to realize that that even though it's their first one, we hang out like Andy and I and Andre since we work from home. This is our virtual office. We're here. You know, you can catch us. <laughs> Much Three or four here. hours a day on the, in a hangout, talking about anything. The, the, the twenty that Some, you're not sleeping. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it, sometimes it's photography, sometimes it's other things. But uh, we, 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 we are hangout junkies because we, we're, we're in home workers. So. Now, does that mean you get more work done at home because well, you know, you're a hangout junkie or less? Well, well, it's interesting. You, you'd think le you'd think less, but really, you know, Andy and I can. Andy and I sometimes will will have will be together for 15 minutes working on stuff and not say a word, and then somebody will come in and yeah. we'll start talking again. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think part of it is just you know, if you get used to working in an office, it's nice to hear somebody else typing. You know, it just makes you feel better. Well, that's Although true. It's hard to believe that Don would five minutes without talking, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the ugly American, okay? And I, I don't have any other friends, so I just hang out with these guys all the time anyway, so. <laughs> and we have, we have characters like... I, I don't uh, have any excuse. 
We have a re another regular, <laughs> another regular named John Butterell, and what he does is he he he's he's got a uh, a mount on his iPhone that he attaches it to the his camera, and then we go on walks with him in Canada. Makes you dizzy. Yeah, it's like the Blair Witch right? Project. Yeah. <laughs> it, he, we, there have been some bugs, but it's been interesting. He, he, took a, he, he got a picture of an owl the other day. We watched him take the picture. We, we kind of have an overview over oh. his lens and a very small owl. And then he, we got to see the picture later on, and it was, of course, big. So it's kind of neat. Oh, that's <laughs> exciting. I like that. Yeah, so it was, we, we've done virtual walks. And, um, you know, we, so I, you've I, been I, to I, Canada I, recently. Exactly. Well, virtually, yes. Virtually, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and, and and it's it's interesting. It's like you know we have a an interesting cross cut um, of the you know we have Germans, Dutch, Where is New he? Zealanders who li New Zealanders who live in England. Okay, so <laughs> Ireland, Ireland, get it right. <laughs> Ireland, Ireland, sorry, Northumbrians. If you would tell me each one of you where you're from, that would be great. Hi. I'm from central Germany. I'm originally from my mother, but I live in central Tennessee. <laughs> okay. I'm in Athens, Greece. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that one. I'm in Athens, Greece. Oh, nice. And uh, I'm from New Zealand, but I live in Ireland. Tipperary. Oh, all right. Interesting. I'm in London, Ontario. Yay, Canada. There you go. <laughs> and Ali? I'm in Sweden, in Karlstad, Sweden. And finally, wow. I'm from the Netherlands. Yep, so what a great group. Yeah. It, 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 I admit that most of them are north, north, northern Europeans, but we have, you know, we have a Greek in there. So I mean, you know, we got the cut. The <laughs> <laughs> Token American here, you know. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, was yeah. there anything on, was there anything we haven't discussed that was on the the agenda today? Oh yeah, many things. <laughs> we missed we, we missed the agenda totally. Yeah, but Don, it was a very wise uh, decision to cut cut it in half because the computer went just crazy. Yeah, no. See, problem. I told you, I told you, I'm a genius. You guys yeah. gotta realize that. I'm, when I, you know, yeah. I don't, I, I, never I don't just, I don't before. just make these decisions willy nilly. You know, <laughs> really. Can I start, uh, start recording again? I wish you had been recording again. I uh, think I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Roger, uh, Roger, Roger's recording had started recording in the second half for you when you left. Yeah. So. Good. And I think good. this is a good point to conclude the recording right now. So I'm going to stop okay. it. Okay. Yes. And uh, so say goodbye to everybody. Hour. And uh, well, you don't buy everybody, all the 64 people who watched this last <laughs> week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very 60, much. Goodbye. 65. Well, that one was my mother. She doesn't count. I'm telling you. Okay. Oh, my